Good morning, church. It's good to be with you this morning. It's good to be able to come into worship. We're here with our with the team uh, here to lead you in worship again for another week at Fast Salvos. We're um, most grateful that you've been able to join us. There's a whole bunch of people from uh, right across our region here with us this morning. If you're with us for the very first time or you want to say hello, our, our welcome team are online and they're wanting to say hello to you uh, and welcome you to worship. So why don't you let us know where you're from and uh, you can find out where to do that uh, in the comments section at the bottom of the screen. In addition to that, I want to uh, let you know about some of the ways that you can connect with us throughout the week. You can do that by subscribing to our YouTube channel at Salvation Army Fast Fern. And uh, you'll see there every single day, there's a daily dose of hope. It's just a thought um, that comes out sort of 90 seconds to two minutes of your day. It's not a whole bunch of time. It's not an onerous task. And uh, you can subscribe to our channel and be able to, um, to connect in in that way. There's some other things that are coming up this week. Make sure that you watch out on the Salvation Army Fast Fern page for ways that you can en engage with uh, Red Shield Appeal this year. The, the Red Shield Appeal this year is happening digitally. So there, there'll be ways for you to be able to do that. Thank you to the people who have already supported us. Uh, we've already started to uh, go to move towards our goal of $5,000 for the Fast Fern Valley. So if you want to be involved in that, um, there'll be opportunities to do that and watch our Facebook page this week for opportunities to partner with us in um, doing all that we can to bring hope where it's needed most in the Fast Fern Valley. We're here this morning in worship. Neil and the team are going to come and, and share with us in worship and we look forward to uh, everything that's going to happen. We've got uh, somebody sharing their testimony this morning so we're looking forward to all that has um, worship has to offer us and Debbie's got a great word for us as we start our new series today love like Jesus so I'm going to hand over to Neil and we'll chat soon bless you church morning all we're going to start by singing the same love Choose the humble, raise them high. You choose the weak and make them strong. You heal our brokenness inside and give us life. Say you love that set the captives free. Say you love that opened eyes to see. Is calling the soul by name. You are calling. Let's spread the heavens wide. Saying God that was crucified is calling the soul by name. You are calling the soul by name. You take the faithless one aside and speak the words you are mine. You call the city and the proud. Come to me now. Say you love that set the captives free. Say you love that open eyes to see. He's calling the soul by name. You are calling the soul by name. Say you love that spread the 
set the captives free Saying love that opened eyes to see His calling us all by name You are calling us all by name Saying God is when the heavens rise Saying love that the screws in fire is calling Wesley's going to come and help us now and we're going to play um, My Redeemer Lives. Here we go. rescued my soul His blood has covered my sin I believe I believe My shame is taken away as it is My pain is healing His name I believe I believe I'll raise a banner, oh, cause my Lord has conquered the grave, my Redeemer lives, my Redeemer lives, my Redeemer lives, my Redeemer my soul His blood has covered my sin I believe I believe My shame is taken away My pain is filled in His name I believe I believe My Lord has conquered the grave, my Redeemer lives, my Redeemer lives, my Redeemer lives, my Redeemer lives. You lift my burdens, I'll rise with you, I'm dancing on this. going to have some sharing on video it'll have to wait till next week it's coming um, technology it's a wonderful thing um, but the question was and Wes can remind me of this what are you going to not take for granted and I'll, 
I was actually thinking about this when he said it. Um, uh, this week I had an interesting experience. I, I've been really aware of my personal space, really aware of the distancing thing. Um, and I have to be really aware of it at work because um, apart from the fact when I'm immediately dealing with my patients, um, I need to, in my interactions with my staff, uh, the other staff, I need to be careful about how I interact with them. And I was having a conversation with my friend Gary, who really good friend, lovely Christian guy, um, and we pretty much every day have a heart-to-heart -heart about life. Um, and I guess because of that, uh, I walked in and started talking to him and I realised after we'd been talking for a few minutes um, that I'd got way too close to him. Um, just my natural inclination was, because I like this guy, I respect him, we have a lot in common, he's a friend, I love him dearly. Um, and because of that, I was just naturally drawn closer to him. Um, the reality is, uh, us humans, uh, we were made for community. We were made to be together. And it's a bit of a cruel joke that, um, that in societies where lots of people are close together, that's, that's where this, this COVID has really hurt people. Um, uh, but yeah, that, that's, that's the thing I won't take for granted. Like I'm a bit of a hugger like my mum. Um, uh, Sarah and Dave are going to come up and pay us a visit later on today and I know that she's really struggling with the in not being able to hug people because she, she got my uh, need to be close to people. Um, and for me, I, I won't ever take that for granted again, um, the closeness that comes with physical contact and just being near to people. Um, yeah, that's I found that really hard. Um, but um, it doesn't mean we can't be close still. Um, it doesn't mean that we can't communicate in a way with people um, that is close. We just need to think about it a bit more. But uh, don't be too hard on yourself if you're struggling with that because as I say, that's how God designed us to be. We're meant to be together. Um, and I'm trying to remember that when I make that mistake. All right, uh, we're going to sing We Fall Down.
for the scripture reading this morning is taken from Matthew chapter 6 and it's verse 14 and verse 15. For if you forgive others their trespasses, for if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. This is the word of the Lord this morning, and may he add a blessing to the reading of his word. Well, good morning, everyone. It's lovely to be in worship with you this morning. And thanks to the team for the beautiful singing and bringing us into an attitude of receiving God's word this morning. The scripture we read today talks to us about forgiveness. Sometimes we think we understand forgiveness, but I encourage you to ask yourself the question this morning, do I really understand forgiveness? Today we are starting a new um, series, as we said, and we're calling it Love Like Jesus. Often we think we can't love like Jesus because, well, he's Jesus, isn't he? And we're just us. We're mere human beings. However, we are not just called to receive the love of Jesus, but we are actually called to love other people like Jesus does. Today we're going to look at the theme that Jesus forgave sinners. We're not only sinners who receive forgiveness, but we are sinners who are actually called and called because of the love of Jesus. We are called to love him and to forgive others as well. Imagine for a moment Jesus hanging on a cross and I know that this imagery is difficult for some. Jesus never sinned, yet was still hung on the cross. Between two criminals, there he hung. He was mocked, jeered at, spat on, ridiculed and tortured. It was in this moment, in all of history, that we will hear the greatest prayer of forgiveness ever prayed. Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. In his agony and pain, he prayed for them who had hurt him. In his agony and pain, he prayed for forgiveness for them who had done the most unforgivable thing. He didn't ask his father to take away his pain or to speed up his death. To our minds, this is hard to accept. For those of you out there with children and grandchildren, you will understand how it feels when your child has been hurt. The child you love with all of your life is in pain. God watches on as his only child is tortured and killed. Yet even with his last breath, Jesus pours out his love in the form of a prayer of forgiveness for those who would harm him. If you are over three years old, then someone somewhere in your life has hurt you or caused you pain. It could be anything from hurt feelings to killing someone. Sometimes life is so unfair. Pain is pain, and our personal journey to forgiveness is ours. But this journey isn't one that we need to walk alone. Sometimes when a pain experience happens, the first person we blame is God. Because God should be able to fix everything, right? The next person we blame is us. And oftentimes, that's where it stays. And we continue to punish ourselves rather than take up the gift of forgiveness that is freely offered. We would prefer to continually punish ourselves for whatever misdemeanor we have caused, whatever pain is happening. We are so, 
sort of designed, not really designed, but we're sort of caught in this misunderstanding that we deserve to be punished. Whereas Jesus came and told us, I do this for you. I forgive all of your sins because you are my child. So I say all of that to ask the question, how do we love like Jesus? Forgiveness is at the heart of the gospel. Jesus came to forgive sinners. That was his whole thing. He came here to teach forgiveness, to teach love, and to be the example of the greatest love and the greatest forgiveness. And having said that, he taught us to do the same. We are followers of Jesus and we are recognised for that by our love for each other. How do we learn to forgive like Jesus? This is not an easy lesson. I'm not even going to pretend that it is. The first thought is that Jesus actually is teaching us to pray for those who hurt us. Whereas we would rather say, you can die in a ditch. But Jesus calls us to pray for those who hurt us. That's what Jesus was doing on the cross and that's what he taught us to do. Bless those who curse you and pray for those who hurt you. Our version of praying for them and Jesus' version of praying for them are wildly different. Pray for those who hurt you, he says in Matthew 5, and the crowd had never heard anything like it. This particular crowd had never heard this kind of teaching before and in fact, they had been taught the very opposite of that. You've heard it said, love your neighbour. You have also heard it said, and hate your enemy. But Jesus was quite radical for his time and he says, love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you. Perhaps there's been a time in your life where you've gone, no way, I am not praying for them. I know I have. I have had a situation in my life where a person destroyed me in such a way that I thought I would never recover from it. I thought I would gain some kind of vindication by harbouring such unforgiveness towards them. But that doesn't hurt them, does it? It destroys you from the inside. Jesus tells us very plainly to love our enemies. This is probably the hardest thing that Jesus would ask his people to do. Often we don't think about what loving our enemies really means until we have an enemy. Then all of a sudden, we don't want to love our enemies anymore. We just go along on our Christian journey. Oh yes, love our enemies, love our enemies. But when there is a persecution, when there is a hurt and there is an enemy to our faith, we find our true testing. Can we love our enemies? Can we pray for them the way Jesus has taught us to? Loving our enemies doesn't mean avoiding them so that we don't have a run-in. It doesn't mean orchestrating your life around different things so that you never meet up. Loving our enemies means bringing them to the throne of God and giving all of our griefs over the matter to him. How do we love the person who has devastated our lives? We pray for them. We don't pray that a wall falls on on them as they walk past it but we definitely pray for them. But why? Why would Jesus teach such a thing? Well, it's as simple as attitude equals action. If I'm praying for someone, what happens? My attitude starts to change. A right attitude leads to a right action. You start by doing something right, even if it's only in your own mind. Start to renew your mind and eventually right attitudes will lead to right actions. Now let me tell you this. When you start praying for someone that you hate, 
or you believe hates you or has been an enemy to your faith and beliefs, when you start to pray for them who persecute you and cause you all kinds of harm, your prayers won't necessarily change them, but they will absolutely change you. The world is going to teach you to love those who love you, and that's lovely. But it's also going to teach you to hate those who hate you, and that's less lovely. Jesus says no. We pray for those who hate us, who persecute us, and will cause all kinds of evil to come down upon us. God freely forgave us, and now as Jesus' followers, we are called to forgive in the same manner that we have been forgiven. It's a journey. And it's a journey that isn't an easy one, but it is a possible one. How do we forgive the unforgivable? And in our minds, there are things that are unforgivable. There are journeys that take people to dark places and to do despicable things. Sometimes we are on the receiving end of those things. So how do you forgive the unforgivable? At some point, we have to make a choice. You may not be there yet. And everyone has their own journey of forgiveness. But I said it before, you don't walk the journey of forgiveness alone. Jesus teaches us how to forgive and he's there with us every step to nudge us in the right way of forgiveness. How we feel is our choice. We can allow our joy to be stolen by unforgiveness or we can choose to reclaim our joy and therefore our lives. This morning during our reflection time, I'd like you to consider this quote from Anne Lamott. She said, Bitterness is like drinking poison and hoping that the other person dies. The same can be said for forgiveness. Forgiveness can be like drinking poison and hoping the other person dies. So this morning, think about your journey of forgiveness. Think about how a lack of forgiveness is stealing what you need to be fulfilled in your journey. As our team comes this morning, and as they sing, take this opportunity to think about not the, not the events that have hurt you, but the way in which you can pray for the feelings that you perhaps harbour. Seek out God and all that he is trying to teach us this morning. Bless you, church. Rescued me and picked me up, a living hope, a grace revealed, a life transformed in righteousness. Oh Lord, you have rescued.
God, we say thank you so much that you have rescued us. Thank you, Lord, for the word that Debbie shared with us this morning that our prayers are not there to change everyone else, but they certainly change us. Lord, thank you that you are doing a work in us, making us like you each and every day. Lord, as we journey this series together, may we learn how to love like Jesus better today than we did yesterday and better tomorrow than we did today. This journey of holiness is what we ask for, we, and we ask that you would continue to work on us and work in us and work through us, we pray. And we pray these things in your name. Amen. I want to say thank you to Debbie for a, a, a great word this morning, a, a real challenge for us, um, to love like Jesus. As we leave this place this morning, I want to remind you that if you want to continue to engage with the Salvation Army during the week, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, like our Facebook page, Salvation Army Fassifern, and uh, you will have opportunity to, to uh, hear from us each and every day. Uh, be, uh, the, our worship this morning will be online later today as well, so there'll be an opportunity for you to share that with friends and with family. There's a great word this morning from Matthew chapter 6, and we are looking forward next weekend to continuing that journey and continuing that series, but also we're next weekend honouring the mums, our grandmas, aunties, spiritual mentors, uh, all the ladies of our church next weekend. So um, look forward to that. Now you don't need to, um, you, you won't need to worry about uh, seeing it. It'll be on demand throughout the day. 
you'll be able to engage with worship. If, you need, if you're wanting to be, if your mum lives within 50 k's of here uh, or of your house, then you can go and visit her. Uh, make sure that it's in a safe distance, metre and a half, all that stuff. But uh, 50 k's, you can go and visit her next weekend. But for us, uh, for those of us who are wanting to honour mums in, a, in the close uh, space here, then you can do that and you can do that by, um, and you'll see us online next Sunday and we look forward to worshipping with you as we honour our mums and the ladies of our church. If um, you are joining with us for the very first time today and you want to continue the conversation, then you can do that. You can do that in a, in a variety of different ways. Um, and, but make sure you comment in this comment section below and one of our team will make contact with you during the week and we'll see if we can organise a coffee together over Zoom because we have to do the social distancing thing. Um, but this morning we're also going to have morning tea. For those that want to join for morning tea online, that's going to happen straight after church this morning. So morningtea.fastafernsalvos.live and you can engage with us over morning tea. We look forward to uh, joining together and sharing in that way. But as we leave this morning, I would ask that the Lord would bless you and keep you. The Lord would make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord will lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace today and in the days ahead. God bless you, friends. Have a great week. Grace revealed, a life transformed in righteousness. Oh Lord, you have rescued me, forgive me. Sin and